Right, okay, so we've got Samantha Carter from Stargate, SG-1, a popular character from that show. Um, not entirely impressed with my own ink sketch there, but I've used a Unipin 0.1 nib. And we're going to start with some yellow ochre mixed with a bit of, sort of tit I think, titanium white now. I'm going to keep it quite light to start with. If you if you use too much water, unless you've got a real highly dense card, it will warp. And it'll, in fact, if you use washes that are very watery, it'll warp a very thick card. So if we go, I'm painting over some of the ink. So why do I do the ink sketch? So yeah, it's, it seems strange that I'm uh, painting over the ink. But the ink sketch allows me to um, use a pencil grid to start with and then rub out the pencil because I can't obviously rub out a pencil sketch and um, rub out the grid without rubbing out the pencil sketch along with it and I like to um, keep that ink sketch there when I'm doing sets and um, so I've just done a huge fairly huge set of cards for Cryptozoic and the uh, DC superheroes and supervillains series release so when I've got that many against the fairly tight deadline if I've got an ink sketch there that's always there so until the last level if I'm really rushing I can do more of a sort of um, light watercolour style um, effect on it in fact I've been using the right I'm using the brush that's far too small for this so I use a bigger brush to get these solid lights in first. So my yellow oak and titanium white I've got there. And then a lot of the um, lighting reflects off the hair here for this image. And so I can actually sort of drop a bit of that yellow oak and white into the flesh tones although here I'm just going to fill it in anyway but that's dark so I might come back to that with a bit of burnt umber so I've got um, some background that I don't really care about it looks like looks like an artifact some sort of perhaps architectural thing I don't think it's a face but I'm just going to fill that in with that light yellow as well and then there's a space there that Looks fairly yellowish. And there's a bit around here. I might of course change the background. But I'm just emulating the source material, the reference so far. Right, so that sort of does that for now. And I've got I've not got a huge amount of paints at the moment, but I'm gonna put out a sap green onto my palette and um, mix that with the same white and I might go along into the yellow and white mix I've already created for a sort of khaki uniform so we'll start applying some fairly solid greens here and it doesn't matter if you go over the lines it's not a colouring book in fact later on depending on if it's a commission I've got a lot longer but if it's, a, it's some set work I might um, potentially leave some ink sharing for the details it just depends on what sort of deadline there is and do you receive the um, amount of time that the art director told you you had in the first place 
because sometimes you can um, be told you're getting two months and end up with one month or three weeks or something like that. So we're just about done on the khaki colour there. And there's a pop up noise. Right, so that's pretty much all the khaki there. Now, looking at the blues I've got here, uh, I think I'm just going to go for an ultramarine. But I might again take the ultramarine and just the spot of the um, green that I've already mixed, the sort of khaki green. And you can see a lot of these sort of clothing elements, depending on the lighting, they will sort of bleed over. So you have got some reflection of one thing to the other. So you've got some of the greens in the um, cloth here. This is fairly dark, but of course it'll dry lighter. So I've missed a bit of khaki there. I don't know. I'll leave that for now. I'll come over here, fill this blue in. And have we got any blues elsewhere? Well, I'll, I'll tend to this uniform first. So the shirt is fairly similar. So let's just fill that in. This part's darker, but I'm just filling it in for now. And then not much more. I'll just sometimes when there's varied tones on the same piece of clothing, I would just treat the lights with a sort of a wash. So I'll just water it down a bit for the lighter bits. But for this video, I'm going to make it fairly solid. Now there is yellow button there so I will go around that and we'll return with the same yellow that we've had for the hair just to make it easier and you can always diversify your colours later but it's nice at this stage to keep it fairly unified so there's the darks on the costume but there is something similar over this part of the background so we'll make that similar colour for now and then we've got a dark over here there are actually shadows in the hair that seem to um, rely on the greens as you, as you might know when you're painting you realize there are a lot more green tones in particular in blonde hair than you would assume so i'll just put a bit more it'll probably be a bit green but that doesn't matter i'll put a bit yellow on that button now the skin tone you can really see on the reference that the um, the light has hit the hair and it's coming down onto the skin. So you've got quite a um, tint there, quite a rosy tint with a bit of. We'll put the yellows in first, and then we can come back and put some um, flesh tones in now. Call that quite yellow. Call that quite yellow, I think. And what shall I go for next? Probably the. I'm going to go for a little burnt umber. I said a little, and I was squeezed out a huge amount, which will have to go in a drawer soon to. Uh, stay fresh while I go and collect my kids from school so 
we've got some burnt umber. I'm going to go for, I don't want that to be too dark at all, so um, let's just try it out, yeah that's okay. Now we just come under the ear, under the ear, and we're coming down along the jaw. Now if it bleeds over, that's fine. Just using the ink for, as a guide. I'll come down. Keep an eye on the time because I've got to go fairly soon to get the kids. There, we'll just put a bit in the ear. Now, as I said, they were quite green some of these hair bits, but I'm going to use the umber just while I'm there. So it'll fit for now. You know, I'm not really too bothered about looking too precise at all. Let's just adjust that camera. So I'm going to use the umber again here at the background. Don't want to go over the hair too much because it might be uh, it's harder to cover the darks with sort of light hair without really filling the brush up and um, I like to keep it quite thin until I get towards the end. Being too careful really with the background. So what's that? We got white. So I'm just using burnt umber. I might change it later. Now we've got. Another blue there that I missed. Well, it's bluey grey. It'd make it closer to grey, but I'll decide what I think later because you don't have to hold to um, the references unless some sort of uh, stipulation by a person who's commissioning you to put some background element in there. But we'll see what it looks like aesthetically later. So the only thing I've left now is the main flesh tone part of the face. Now what I'm going to choose, I'm a bit short at the moment. I'm going to go for burnt sienna. So I'm going to put a bit of burnt sienna out with the same. Make sure I wash the brush here because I don't want too many greens or blues to have come from the previous colours. And then I'm going to bring some white with a little burnt sienna. Mm. Yes, it would be fantastic for you to watch this palette, but unfortunately I'll just set this tripod up. So for the real highlights towards the right of the face the best thing for me to do at this point is just to leave that exposed that's what the white part of the card i'm just going to bring the burnt sienna along the cheekbone down along the jaw and i might just fill in the brush, I think the brush I'm using is too big, but it's filling the lips because I'm about to leave. So I'll take a mm, smaller brush, I'll take some of the same blue just because I'm really lazy and I'm not going to squeeze any of the blue out. I have got some, what's this here? Cerulean. But I'm going to just use the Ultramarine because that's there and I'm about to leave. So, right, so with a smaller brush, I'm just going to approach the eyes. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of blue in there. Now, I'm not particularly impressed with the ink sketch. So, the one thing that might have to move is the eyeballs. 
might move somewhat but that is what I'm doing for the very unsophisticated base layer of my painting so far uh, just an experiment I'll do some speed some speed paintings later